Mercedes-Benz took a big risk bringing its line of compact cars to the United States. With four-cylinder engines and front-wheel drive, these cars have more in common with the average Honda or Toyota than anything traditionally associated with Mercedes. But the gamble paid off. These cars attracted hordes of new younger customers. At first glance, the compact GLB is nothing more than an exercise in brand dilution to offer a Mercedes for the masses. Its starting price of $38,000 poises to do the unthinkable by inviting a new class of owners into the brand. After all, the hip GLB costs exactly what Kelly Blue Book claims is the new car average price in 2019 and even less money than a fully loaded 2020 Honda Passport Elite. It looks like a traditional SUV, but it's actually a car-based crossover sibling to the Mercedes A-Class sedan and the CLA four-door coupe. Making a car shaped like a box is a great way to increase interior space, which makes the GLB much more spacious than the other compact crossover, the GLA, which is basically a glorified hatchback. Despite the vehicle's relatively small footprint, Mercedes offers it with a third row of seats, bringing the total number of occupants to seven. Other luxury automakers offer similarly sized crossovers, but without the third row. The BMW X1 has more headroom, but the GLB has more legroom. The Audi Q3 trails behind both of its German rivals. As for the boot, with its second row folded, the Mercedes has significantly more cargo space than the BMW and the Audi. Mercedes didn't have comparable figures available with the second row up, but it should be competitive enough. The GLB's cabin is a nice place to be. The tall roof makes room for lots of glass, giving the interior an open, airy feel. As for quality, interior materials are a step down from more expensive Mercedes models, but of appropriate quality for the price range. This mini GLS design has some real benefits though. Outward visibility is so good, regardless of seating position, you will feel you are driving the world's best handling tour bus. Blind spots are minimal, unlike in coupe-like crossover. However, drivers expecting the traditional tall SUV seating position will be disappointed. You do sit a bit higher than in a normal car, but not so high that you are towering over traffic as you'd be in a proper SUV. The airy feel is amplified by the minimalist center console topped with the company's turbine-style air vents and MPUX single-tablet digital gauge cluster and infotainment touchscreen. Overall, it's very similar to the CLA and A-Class sedans, a great base to build upon. The MBUX includes standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, with an available setup that merges the infotainment screen and digital instrument cluster into an almost seamless long horizontal screen. The functionality of MBUX is the best in its class, and you are sure to be impressed by its stylish graphics and responsiveness. It includes a voice assistant that launched with the prompt Hey Mercedes and responds to more conversational voice commands, allowing you to adjust the temperature by saying I'm cold or tune the radio by saying the name of a station. Although a dual 7-inch dual-mounted digital gauge cluster and infotainment touchscreen are standard, opting for the 2200 premium package replaces both with larger 10.3-inch units that provide an even more immersive experience. Overall usability is great, though somewhat confusing menus sometimes often require multiple steps to access simple functions. The column shifter frees up space for the MBUX trackpad, which is a considerable improvement from the first generation. The medium-sized storage cubby beneath the center armrest is a little too small for the spontaneous adventure vibe is pulling off elsewhere. Otherwise, the front seat experience is one of ergonomic perfection, which alone would make it a top contender even if the rest of the well-appointed interior wasn't as good as it is. Heated and cooled seats are available, as is real leather. The second row of seats can slide forwards by 90mm or backwards by 50 from their standard position, and the backrests can be adjusted through 8 stages. With it slid all the way forwards, the second row is really only suitable for kids. But with it slid all the way back, even adults over 6 feet ought to be comfortable. The third row is just for kids, however. Stowing, unfolding, and accessing the two rearmost seats is easy enough, and it's entirely possible to do so with one hand. And there is even a useful special compartment in the boot floor to store the parcel shelf when it's not in use. Hitting the road in the all-new GLB, proved its platform by offering a refined, planted ride that rivaled that of a C-Class from a couple of years ago. Compared to its modern siblings, it produced a bit more wind noise due to its boxy shape, but it's something you can forgive in the name of style. If you equip the GLB250 with the AMG package, the larger 20-inch wheels wrapped in sportier rubber and adaptive dampers offered a slightly sportier ride, though not one that seems worth the additional $5,000 you will fork over. 221 horsepower isn't exactly a whole lot to work with, especially with a curb weight of 3,700 pounds. So lots of credit goes to the 8-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission for making the most of it and delivering perfectly acceptable acceleration for the form. 
It's not quick. 6.9 seconds is your 0 to 60 time here, but it feels unburdened when asked for a burst of acceleration from a standstill or for a highway pass. Traversing curvy bureaus proved to be more satisfying than expected, especially on the stock 18-inch wheels and all-season tires, with the GLB managing its load with composure expected from a Mercedes. That said, you won't mistake its handling for that of a crossover riding on a rear-wheel drive platform like the larger Mercedes GLC. The formatic all-wheel drive system here is tuned to fight traction loss, not really improve performance, so it runs primarily in front-wheel drive in daily use. The Turbo 4's responsive nature and the platform's stable ride mean you can end up flirting with the triple digits without even realizing it. At speed, the driving experience is best described as serene, especially with the wind noise at 90 miles per hour drowning out any complaints from other passengers. Where the GLB250 finally falters is standard safety tech. The only freebies are LED headlamps, a backup camera, crosswind assist, and automatic emergency braking. Things that are starting to pop up in downmarket cars like adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, and blind spot monitoring are locked behind a $2,250 driver assistant paywall. To be fair, the package offers a bunch of super competitive extras, including GPS integrated adaptive cruise control, a lane change system that will execute the maneuver with the press of a turn signal, and evasive steering assist. If we were to choose the best way to spec a GLB, it wouldn't make sense to get a crossover without all-wheel drive, so the ideal GLB would include the formatic system at $2,000 extra. We would add the premium package at $2,200, which includes the bigger 10.3-inch screens and blind spot monitoring, as well as the driver assistant package at $2,250, which includes adaptive cruise control and a host of other driver aids. We would also add some standalone options, including adaptive suspension at $990, a heads-up display at $1,100, and wireless phone charging at $200. Though you should be careful since the price can increase dramatically and quickly with the options on offer. Entry-level luxury cars sit in an awkward space between more traditional models and vehicles from mainstream brands. You can buy a lot of cars for the GLB's base price if you are willing to forego the Mercedes badge, but with options, the GLB starts to encroach on the price of a larger GLC. The GLB saving race, though, is its packaging. This is a right-sized crossover with enough space to justify buying it over a sedan or a hatchback without getting excessive. It's hard to find that in a crossover from any brand. Many compact crossovers from mainstream brands are quite large, while the smallest models compromise passenger and cargo space. As a luxury vehicle, the GLB is better executed than its rivals from Audi, BMW, and Land Rover. The Mercedes is comparable to these crossovers in metrics like gas mileage and acceleration but feels a bit more refined and special. It also offers the best infotainment setups in this segment. So, what do you think of the new GLB? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on notifications for the latest car reviews and news. Take care, and see you in the next one.